This video is meant to be watched before you get into the publication process. So you've almost finished building your app, but you're not quite ready to publish it into the stores yet. We're going to talk about everything that you need to prepare in order for your app to be published as quickly as possible. Before we have a look at the preparations for the publication process, we're going to quickly evaluate if a formal publication is even necessary for your app. I'm going to give you a checklist of all the things that you need to be ready for the publication process. That includes the developer accounts that you're going to need, as well as a walkthrough through all of the store assets, for example screenshots. With these things prepared, you're ready to go. I have also prepared a Notion template for you, where you can find the checklist again with all of the tips. To get you ready as quickly as possible, make sure to check out the link in the description where you'll also be able to duplicate the template to your own workspace. Is publishing the app even necessary for your use case? There are two different ways you can share your app, the most popular being to publish it to either the App Store or the Google Play Store. This approach makes sense when you want to reach a lot of people, and it's also the approach we're going to be talking about in this video. But there's also another one. You can also share your app to only a limited amount of people. This is useful if you only want to validate your MVP, or if you have internal tools, which are only used by one company. Uploading the files will be the same as when you're publishing the app to be public. Just at the end you say that you either want to go into the Google Play beta program or test flight. That way, of course, you don't have to do anything regarding marketing or sales. If you want to get the app on the phones of your users even quicker, you can choose to download the debug APK from Bravo Studio. This allows users using an Android phone to directly install the app to their device. So to recap, if you want to test or use your app only with a small amount of users using an Android phone, you use the debug APK. If you want to run a proper test on both operating systems, you can upload the app to TestFlight for iOS and the Google Play beta program for Android. Only if you want to reach a lot of people and have a public listing, you choose to go the whole publication process. So how to best prepare for that publication process and what really do you need? The checklist that I'm going to go through with you in this video is also going to be available as download in the video description. Feel free to download it and check the boxes as you walk towards the publication of your app. You can only access the portals to upload the app files when you have a developer account. If you want to publish on both platforms, then you're also going to have to have two different developer accounts. You can find the links where to apply for those developer accounts in the video description. The main difference between Apple and Google is that the Google account will cost you $25 in a one-time payment. After you've paid these $25, you get instant access to the developer console. Being part of the Apple developer program will cost you $99 every year that you want to be part of it. Apple also reviews your application and that process might take up to one month. Most of the time you get a response way quicker, but I would still advise you to apply as early as possible. Now that you have those accounts, I would advise to explore what you can do in those consoles. Even if you don't have the app ready to be published yet, you could have a look at what texts will be required and also which images. I would advise you to write those marketing texts in a separate document so you don't have to mess around in these text fields. That way you can also ask for feedback if you're working with a team. These portions are also in the Notion template. The next thing that you're going to need for the listing will be images and we have a neat file for that in the description again. This file has three different sections, one for the app itself, then one for the Android store and one for the iOS store. The app icon and the splash screen will both go directly into the file you upload to Bravo. So these will be part of your app. This app icon will not only be displayed on the home screen of your user, but also will be used inside of the store listing. The splash screen is a screen that will be displayed once the user opens the app. This is different from the loading screen that is displayed every time the user opens a page. The splash screen will only be displayed once when the user opens the app. When you duplicate this, make sure to also copy the Bravo tags into your file. That would be assets icon and assets splash. The rest of the elements that you find in this file shouldn't go into the file that you upload to Bravo because Bravo shouldn't fetch those. These are only necessary for the app stores. The banner will only be used inside of your Google Play listing. An action that looks like this. 
The screenshot template is pretty self-explanatory. Just click on the image and replace it with the screenshot from your app. Then you can also add some branding to the sides or change the text above here. Notice how the iOS version has two different aspect ratios. Even if they look similar, the App Store requests both of them, so make sure that you have both aspect ratios ready. Once you're done designing, just click the frame and export from Figma as you would usually do. If these resources help you, I would be happy if you gave this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. The next tip that I would give you would be to read the guidelines that each of the stores provide. There's a lot of stuff in there, so it'd probably be best if you just skim that text and then if you get rejected for one of the guideline points, then you can go into detail. Especially the design guidelines are very strict, but don't take them too seriously. Even if you can't check all of the boxes, if your app looks nice, you'll still get approved. Remember that the goal of these guidelines is to ensure quality. There has to be some kind of barrier in order for us as users to experience the best apps possible. Some highlights of these guidelines are the app has to have a minimum functionality. You can't just take your website, put it in a web view and call it an app. There has to be some sort of native functionality. Also, when you're collecting user data, for example, using a login, you have to make sure that this user data is actually used by the app. So you shouldn't collect data just for the sake of collecting data. After your app has been reviewed, you shouldn't drastically change the functionality of the app. This will lead to the update of the app being rejected. An extreme example for a case like that could be an app that started out as a kids education app and then incorporated gambling elements. The gambling update would definitely be rejected. Generally speaking, for your app to be approved, it should be usable and it shouldn't feature anything offensive or illegal. Another thing that could get you rejected if you don't prepare it enough is a privacy policy. Both stores have a main focus on the user's privacy and a main goal is to educate the user on how its data will be used inside of the app. For general app cases, Bravo provides a privacy policy, which you can copy to your own site and adapt it. Know that you are responsible for the user's privacy, so replace Bravo with your own company. You can also find various privacy policy generators online, where you can go through every aspect of your app and check if it violates any privacy laws. Since this is a law topic, which can also vary from country to country, it's best to check in with a professional who is specialized in this area. Once you have a privacy policy ready, you can basically host it anywhere. If you already have a website for your app, why don't you create a subpage for the app privacy policy? Note that the privacy policy for the app can be different from the website privacy policy. Just make sure that the privacy policy page will be publicly available because you will have to share a link to that in your app store listing. You don't have to link the privacy policy inside of your app again. Technically, it's enough to just have the link in the listings page. But to be transparent with your users, I would advise you to also put it somewhere in the app, for example, the settings page. Once you have everything from this checklist prepared, you're ready to go to the publication process. We have two videos on this channel where the whole publication process is explained in detail, so you can go along with it at your own pace. In this episode, we also have a lot of links in the description below, so make sure to check them out for the assets Figma file, for example, or the Notion template. If you have any problems with the publication process, make sure to check out the Bravo community. And there's also special publication support for Bravissimo plan users. Once you've published your app, I would love to see it. So please post it in the Made with Bravo channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for a new episode of Build It with Jonas next Tuesday. Bye.